Hello, and thank you for joining this AWS reInvent session. Over the last year, the AWS Elastic Beanstalk team has been hard at work delivering features and functionality that help customers deliver their workloads faster, more securely, and with cost savings in mind. Today, I'd like to talk to you about two of these features that help customers do exactly just that. If you've ever wondered about canary-style deployments with Elastic Beanstalk, or if you've ever wanted to share your Elastic Beanstalk environment to other AWS services via load balancing, then this is the talk for you. This is network traffic splitting and shared, sharing the road with network traffic splitting and shared load balancers. My name is Christian Weber. I am a developer advocate at AWS, and I'm excited to talk to you about what we have in store today. For some basic housekeeping, I'll give a basic introduction of myself and my role at AWS, and then we'll cover if you're new to Elastic Beanstalk, and then we'll get into the details with network traffic splitting and shared load balancing. So again, my name is Christian Weber, and I'm a developer advocate at AWS. Specifically, I cover developer user experience and tooling. So if you've ever used a tool like the AWS Code Suite, our software development kits, the AWS Cloud Development Kit, or one of our IDEs or one of our various IDE toolkits, those are the services that I cover. I've been in technology for about six years now, and prior to that, I cut my teeth on the operations side of the house in financial services for about the same time. When I first got introduced to Amazon and Amazon Web Services, the first service that I was introduced to was AWS Elastic Beanstalk. And it holds, us, uh, it holds a soft spot in my heart, and I'm really excited to talk about some of the new features and functionality that it carries. So go, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get started. Now, before we get into the details, I'd like to talk to you today if you are new to Elastic Beanstalk. Now, I know that this is a 300 level talk, and so for the folks in the room that already know what Elastic Beanstalk is, Please bear with me for just a couple moments. We'll get right into the details here in just a few minutes. But for the rest, for the rest of the folks in the audience who this might actually be your first uh, foray into Elastic Beanstalk, I'd love to set some groundwork here and help you understand what Elastic Beanstalk allows you to do as a customer. Now, when you are getting started on AWS, and you're trying to decide how you want to deliver your workload or how you want to migrate an existing workload from uh, maybe your on-premise data center or some sort of co-location, AWS gives you a lot of options to decide what services you want to use. You have decisions to make around compute, storage, databases, the network itself, uh, the management options, and so on and so forth. And for most customers, this is great. This variety is wonderful. But sometimes you just want to be able to deploy your code quickly, deliver business value, and move on to the next thing. Elastic Beanstalk is essentially a deployment orchestrator that allows you to move your code from its source to deployment very quickly. It helps you manage the, uh, it helps take away the undifferentiated heavy lifting of managing IT infrastructure and it allows you to deliver business value for your customers. One of the best things about Elastic Beanstalk, in my opinion, is that it's very easy to get started. So whether you are choosing S3 as your uh, source or you're using some other repository, essentially this pipeline becomes very simple to upload, configure your environment for your workload and then deploy it to somewhere within Amazon Web Services. And we like to do this as easily as possible. And we know that customers have a wide variety of choices when it comes to their technologies and their workflows. So what we wanted to do at Amazon to help customers do this was keep this workflow consistent and repeatable. And that's what we did with Amazon uh, with Elastic Beanstalk. Also, for our customers, it ends up being a gateway to modernization. Now, for a lot of customers, when they're thinking about migrating workloads to AWS, it is very common to adopt what's known as a lift and shift methodology. 
meaning I might bring a compute instance from my on-premise data center or colo, or maybe it's even at my place of uh, work. And I bring that physical instance and migrate it directly to a compute instance on AWS. Now, this is certainly a valid way to bring your workloads to AWS. But what we find with customers is that it becomes even more efficient to use Elastic Beanstalk in this capacity. Specifically, it allows customers to uh, very quickly adopt continuous integration and continuous deployment. It makes the uh, platforming story for customers moving from Windows to a Linux environment very efficient and helps them save money quickly. And then also, it, it is a, moder uh, a gateway to containerization as well. Containerization is a topic that we can spend a lot of time talking about, but to save our time here, it allows you essentially to use that technology with Elastic Beanstalk. Now, one of the final questions before we get into the, uh, the nitty gritty of this, uh, these fun uh, the uh, network traffic splitting and shared load balancing today is when would I use Elastic Beanstalk for my workloads? We've spent a lot of time thinking about this and the three common patterns that we see with uh, customers using Elastic Beanstalk are for API services. So you might be a customer that is providing an API service internally to another team, or you might be providing that externally. That's a wonderful candidate for Elastic Beanstalk. Additionally, you might be deploying websites or web applications, either internally or externally. And then finally, we find that lots of customers are using, our, uh, using it as worker nodes. So if you're, using, uh, if you're doing some sort of batch or scheduled work, or you are doing some sort of ETL workload, these are all great candidates for uh, Elastic Beanstalk. Now let's get into the fun stuff, or the really fun stuff. Uh, customers have, uh, like I said, have moved many of their workloads from uh, their on-premise data center to Elastic Beanstalk, and they've used Elastic Beanstalk to do that. Now, however, as with any service, and, and after listening to our customers' feedback, and as they've matured on AWS, sometimes there are gaps in our services that our customers want to fill with some features or functionality. And one of those things was the type of deployments that you could do with Elastic Beanstalk. Now, previously, when you deployed code to, a, to an Elastic Beanstalk application, you were given the choice of four options. You were given an all at once option, meaning all of my instances would be updated with my newest uh, version of my application at the same time. You'd have either rolling or rolling with batch style deployments, so you'd, you'd uh, space it out just a little bit. Or you'd have immutable deployments where they either deploy or they don't. And so for most of our customers, this was perfect. This uh, allowed customers to deploy as they needed, and it allowed them to move quickly. But as customers matured on AWS and they started adopting DevOps uh, principles and methodologies with their workflows, our customers realized that these uh, workflows were great for production and test environments, but they weren't necessarily great for both. And so customers had to make a trade-off between speed and downtime, meaning I had to choose whether or not I wanted to uh, deploy quickly with the risk of greater downtime, or I had to decrease the uh, speed in which I'm deploying uh, to limit that downtime as well. Now, that's where network traffic splitting comes in. Uh, we listen to our customers, and one of the things that we were uh, really keen on implementing for our customers based on their feedback was network traffic splitting. This allows customers to adopt a canary-style method of deployment with AWS, Elastic Beanstalk, and do it very quickly. So, what does that look like, and how does that actually uh, how is that actually implemented for a customer? Well, let's go ahead and take a journey uh, with a uh, with a customer and an application that might be or that is deployed to Elastic Beanstalk. Now, this application is mission critical. Our organization is responsible for an application called Dog Weather, or DW for short. Now, this mission critical application does something very important. It takes in the zip code that you provided as a user, and it provides back the current weather, the forecast, and the evening weather as well. But most importantly, it gives you a very cute picture of a dog that you can uh, use to help brighten your day. Users love it, and we are responsible for maintaining it. 
One of the architectural decisions that we made when deploying this application was using Elastic Beanstalk. So when to walk through that workflow, what a customer is doing is when they send a request to our website, that traverses Route 53 and goes to our application load balancer. And we have a couple of different fleets of instances spread across availability zones that essentially will handle all of those requests. So if I need to make a change here, how would I do that? Let's go ahead and talk about that for a little bit. Now, one of the most important things that we want for our users is to make sure that the code that we're deploying is safe and it's secure and that it's accessible for our users as well. Now, going back to what our application looks like, we can see here that we have various shades of blue in the color cards. Some of the feedback that we've received is that it would be nice if the cards could be of higher contrast colors so people could more easily identify which card was which one. So we're gonna go ahead and listen to our customers and I'm gonna walk you through what that process looks like. So we're gonna talk about what a canary style deployment uh, looks like from a high level abstracted perspective. And then we're gonna show exactly what that looks like from an AWS perspective and network traffic splitting inside of Elastic Beanstalk. So let's think back to that change. We want to go ahead and make a change to the front end. And essentially in this case, what we're gonna do is just make some styling changes to our cards and we're going to uh, have them be a different color. Now we're gonna go ahead and fast forward and say that we're ready for this change. We've tested it locally and we want to introduce it to production. Now in the old world, we would take this change, we would give it off, we would hand it off to somebody else and that person would test it uh, locally and then schedule some sort of downtime to roll out the new application. But with the canary style deployment, what we're actually doing here is introducing that change to our fleet of instances in uh, our fleet of instances that are ha that handles our production code. So what we are doing here is essentially creating uh, an atomic object such as a server instance, and we want to introduce it to the fleet. And then what we are doing from here is then we are waiting and observing. And what, what this allows us to do is it allows this worker node or this worker instance to receive production traffic, but at the same time, because it's only delegated to one single instance, if something, need, if something happens, such as I introduce this change and all of a sudden my code change starts returning HTTP 500, 502, or 503 errors, then I have the ability to roll back just that instance. So a canary is very nice, uh, especially when you're adopting a DevOps culture. Uh, one of the tenants, uh, or one of the benefits of adopting a DevOps culture is that you deploy faster and you deploy more often. And so when you're deploying in this sort of methodology where you're introducing changes at, within a very small subset, this allows you to get feedback really quickly and allows you to roll back if there's a problem, and then it allows you to uh, move on and deliver business value as well. And then finally, once we're ready to fully roll out to the rest of the fleet, we've developed a process internally that will allow you to fully promote it to your application fleet. So that's great from a very high level abstraction, right? When I talk about when we implemented that uh, internally, what does that mean? Well, in our case, what we did here is we implemented network traffic splitting. And so what we, do, we are doing here from a very specific Elastic Beanstalk perspective is that we are automatically scaling up a separate auto scaling group with the new version of our application. And then we are creating a traffic splitting rule that will allow uh, traffic to automatically route to the new version for a certain amount of time. And once that criteria is met, we fully merge all of that traffic back in. Again, this sounds great, but how does it actually work? Now you can certainly set this up in a template file or uh, via the CLI, but you can also do this in the console. And that's what I'll show you through here is I'll walk you through the steps of setting this up in the console. One of the first things you'll need to think about is setting up the capacity or the minimum number of instances that you want. In the case of our change, we are setting up Elastic Beanstalk, our application, or the environment within our application to run a minimum of five instances and a maximum of 10 inside there. We've chosen on-demand instances, but for the, for the sake of this, we'll, we'll keep it simple. 
Next, uh, we'll want to uh, set up the traffic splitting policy specifically. Now, this is where uh, we are setting up the specific rules. So what we've done here is we are setting up a rule that says we are going to set up the amount of traffic that we're going to send to that new version when it's deployed or when it's uploaded. And then we're going to set a, an evaluation time of a certain time period. What's nice about this is it gives you the flexibility to say, uh, you know, what is my comfortable amount of time that I am OK to make a change after a certain amount of time? So if I'm developing a change, again, going back to our dog weather application, if I know that a simple style change requires maybe one minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, all of that is easily configurable, configurable within the UI. And then additionally, you're setting the traffic splitting percentage. Maybe I'm comfortable with 1%, maybe it's 10%. And then you set that up. And then additionally, there are a few other things that you can configure as well. You can set up timeouts, uh, health checks, and thresholds. Uh, earlier, I talked about automatic rollbacks. So when you're setting your command timeout, if, uh, if, the, if the health check times out during this deployment, this will automatically roll back your application, again, providing you with that automated uh, safety uh, for when using Elastic Beanstalk. Now, what does this actually look like in the UI? So let's say we've made our change, we've uploaded our code, and then if we go into uh, the actual Elastic Beanstalk environment, what we'll see here is uh, the health wheel spinning, and we'll see some updates about the events itself. So we can see that uh, one of our applications uh, was uh, being uh, set up in a degraded state. But then what we actually do to confirm that network traffic splitting has been implemented is that we can see here further in the events that we actually have it specifically called out in the, uh, the events. All these events are also available in CloudWatch. So if you're doing some sort of log streaming or log forwarding, you'll be able to pick up those events just the same. And then what we can see here in, this, in, the, in the scope of our specific change, uh, we've set up 20% of all of our traffic for 20 minutes to run to our new version. Now that's great. We've done that. We've set it up. But how do we how do we know that this is actually happening? How are how can we be actually sure? Now, if we go back into the environment configuration uh, of that Elastic Beanstalk environment, and we go to the instances, we can actually see the instance IDs from both fleets. Now, again, we had a minimum of five instances per uh, per fleet. And we can see here on the left-hand side, by looking at the deployment ID that shows the newest version is running in a fleet, and the previous version, version 6, is also running in a fleet. And we can also see, based on time, that the newest version has only been running for about four minutes. So let's go back to that, uh, that original slide around application, I'm sorry, around network traffic splitting, uh, for network traffic splitting. So what we did here is we, took, again, the, uh, the two versions. We created two separate auto-scaling groups automatically. And we've routed 80% of the traffic and 20% of the traffic between the two. So version one, our old version, is uh, receiving the majority of our traffic. And then we're trying out our change with 20% uh, production traffic as well. So this, again, makes it very easy to go ahead and get started. And then once that's done, we go ahead and merge all of that traffic to the new version. And here, the magic happens. We can now see our production change ready to go. So we've got higher contrast, and our users are very happy. Now let's talk about shared load balancing. One of the biggest uh, pieces of feedback that we have received at AWS and the, the Elastic Beanstalk team has received about um, Elastic Beanstalk is the uh, previous way of managing load balancers could be complex and it could be expensive. If you do the napkin math, running a single load balancer at minimum capacity is roughly about $15 per month. But for many customers, they are running multiple environments, they are deploying multiple, or I'm sorry, they're deploying multiple applications, they're deploying many environments from those applications. And if we have a one-to-one -one mapping of load balancers to environments, that can get very expensive very quickly. So the team took in this feedback, and they set out with a goal this year of making that possible for customers, specifically having the capability to use a shared load balancer across 
multiple either multiple uh, Elastic Beanstalk services or for other service uh, other AWS services as well. So what does that look like? Well, let's go back to our great dog weather service, right? Um, we now want to introduce a new change and give it a backend API that other customers can deliver to. We've listened to our customers, our dog weather customers, and another team within our organization wants to deploy cat weather. Now, more importantly in cat weather, they don't want a picture of a dog. They want to provide a picture of a cat. Now, I could theoretically just give them my application and they could certainly deploy a version of it, but in our organization, we want to adopt a service-oriented architecture. We want to deploy all of our services as APIs, and we want to make it easy for our uh, other teams to consume those services. So what we're going to go ahead and do is provide that service as an API. And what we're going to do with the team that is currently we're currently working with, we're going to hook into the shared load balancer that they're already currently using and set up our environment to use that one as well. Makes it very easy for us to manage. Now, from a technology standpoint, we are using uh, Flask to, to, to deploy our application. So instead of uh, returning uh, some HTML content, what we're doing here instead is just returning some key value pairs, and we're going to go ahead and deploy that as an Elastic Beanstalk environment. So how do we do that? Well, let's walk through the console, and we'll show you how to hook that up. The first thing that we're going to do here in our circumstance is that we're going to set up a separate environment for this API. We know that this customer is going to use a very specific version of this API, and we want them to go ahead and be able to have it isolated uh, for their use case. So we set up the separate environment, we give it a name, and we give it a description, so we'll, we know how to reference it later. And then we'll go ahead and set up the, uh, the version that we want to use in this API. Now, in my case, I've set up an exist. I've already uploaded an existing version to Elastic Beanstalk, and in my case, they are uh, uh, essentially time uh, uh, numerical versions that are ascending. So I choose the latest version, and then I go ahead and click on the. Uh, I go ahead and click on Configure More Options. Now, what I'll need to do here is going through the configuration. I'll actually need to set up the load balancer in the uh, Configure More Options screen. So I'll set it up as an application load balancer. But more importantly, this is where the magic happens. You'll actually, on the right-hand side, you'll see a new option that says Shared Load Balancer. Now, it's pretty uh, easy to configure from this point. All you'll need to do is uh, find the Amazon resource name, or ARN, of that uh, load balancer, and then you provide it uh, in the drop-down uh, drop menu there. You can also set up different listening ports. So if you have uh, if you have a requirement from another team that you're hooking into their shared load balancer, or if you're using a shared load balancer already, uh, you can certainly set up this service to run on a different port if you needed to. Um, you can also use path-based routing, host-based routing, uh, and so on to help you uh, achieve those goals as well. So we fast forward, we've hooked this up. Now we've set it up to the uh, shared ALB and now we have it available as an API. So in this case, I'm making a test to make sure that it works. And so I'm sending an HTTP request to my application load, balance, uh, load balancers path and the custom API route that I've implemented in my, my application code. And we can see here that the parameters have been returned with the key value pairs that that team needs to make their own cat weather service, minus the very cute picture of a dog. All right, so that sounds great. I'm still a little unsure of what I actually created, you might be asking yourself. So this very simple diagram is exactly what you've done here. We've taken on the left our dog weather API, we've hooked it into a common shared load balancer, and we're providing it as a service to another AWS service that those, people, those customers can consume. This is really great because it allows customers to uh, decouple components. So I don't necessarily have to worry about what the folks on the other side of the API are doing. I can scale my application as it needs to be scaled. And uh, the customer doesn't have to worry about, or the other, the other side of the consumer doesn't have to worry about that as well. Again, this, this really helps you significantly reduce the cost of your shared load balancers as well. So rather than pay for your own load balancer and provide that uh, hosting uh, path and connectivity to that ECS team, Maybe both teams can share the cost of that, or another team picks up that cost, or, or so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing that allows you to do, again, is it allows you to uh, uh, 
share your ALB across existing environments as well. So another common uh, uh, workflow is maybe I want to have a dedicated load balancer for my uh, development, my, uh, my development, my test environments, my QA, my UAT, but then maybe I want production to have its own dedicated load balancer. With the configuration as it's set up today, you're more than welcome to do that. And then again, more uh, 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 as well to cover this, uh, you can also use host-based and path-based routing again, as I previously mentioned, to uh, serve uh, multiple Elastic Beanstalk environments. So again, thank you very much for the time that you've spent today on this video. Again, my name is Christian Weber. I'm a developer advocate at Amazon Web Services. This is the best way to reach me on Twitter. Uh, Classic Web Dog is my Twitter handle. Happy to talk to you about Elastic Beanstalk or whatever comes to mind. Um, thank you very much, uh, and I hope you have a great day.